Hello teachers, learners, and parents. Sir Jeff po at your service. Alam nyo ba na meron tayong website na tinatawag na DepEd Commons? Ang DepEd Commons ay binuo upang gawing accessible ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral dito sa ating bansa gamit lamang ang inyong mga smart devices gaya ng cellphones, tablets, at computers. Dito ay maaari nating ma-access ang iba't ibang learning materials mula sa Department of Education. Meron itong mga interactive materials, electronic self-learning modules, at instructional video lessons mula sa DepEd TV na tiyak na makatutulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral galing ka man sa public o private school. Walang problema! Dahil welcome ang lahat dito. Para ito sa mga guro, magulang at mga mag-aaral mula sa kinder hanggang grade 12, alternative learning system o ALS, at pati na rin ang special education. At huwag kang mag-alala dahil kahit walang load ay maaari mong ma-access ang mga learning materials. Tama! Libre ito! Ang kailangan mo lamang gawin ay i-on ang iyong data at buksan lamang ang iyong browser at i-type ang commons.deped.gov.ph Alam na ba ng iyong mga kasamahang guro o mag-aaral ang tungkol sa DepEd Commons? I-share mo na ang video na ito upang matuto rin sila kung paano gagamitin ang DepEd Commons sa mabilis at napakadaling paraan. Muli! Ito po si Sir Jeff at kita-kits po tayo sa DepEd Commons. Paalam! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Hello, hello. Good afternoon to all the parents, teachers, and learners all over the Philippines watching us live through DepEd EdTech Unit, DepEd Dio, DepEd Philippines Facebook pages, and DepEd TV official YouTube channel. We are in the first week of English 4, quarter 4, so be ready with your modules, paper, pen, pencil as we journey in the amazing world of English 4. And as we go on with, this, uh, with, with our tutorial this afternoon, you can also comment your answers for the activities in the comment section below. All right, so let me go ahead and read some of the comments here. Uh, we just want to say hi. A huge shout out to Kian Anthony Pinostro, uh, watching from Calibo Pilot Elementary School, Grade 4 SPED FL. Hello, hello. And of course, we have here Josh Lacre, watching from Tuktukan, Giginto Bulacan, Tuktukan Elementary School, Grade 4, Apulinario Mabine. There you go. And uh, we also have here a uh, shout out to Zai Rivera. Good afternoon. Watching from Pampanga. Uh, Zairene May L. Rivera from Bacolor Elementary School, Grade 4, Bonifacio. And of course, um, forgive me, I'm not going to be able to read all of your comments. But nevertheless, thank you so much for tuning in uh, for our Itulai session for this afternoon. Okay, so let me go ahead and proceed with, uh, with uh, our tutorial session. Um, by the way, I'm Sir Almir Cesar Vidikinha. You can call me Sir Ace or Tutor Ace. And as I mentioned earlier, 
Uh, we are well into the first week of the fourth quarter, and I'll be taking over uh, two or three weeks for the remaining quarter of this school year. And wow, akalai niyo yon. We only have a couple of weeks left in this school year, so let's make the most out of it. Okay. So this afternoon, uh, we are going to learn about the features of journalistic writing. Okay. And uh, at the end of the module, you should be able to identify features of journalistic writing. And you know what? Uh, quite exciting itong topic na to because I'm sure most of you are familiar with the term journalism or at least have an idea about it and uh, you know maybe know some of uh, some of the well-known personalities in the world of journalism. And malay natin, one of you might be the next big name in, in journalism, the next TV personality, uh, so to speak. Okay, sige. So before we delve into the topic, uh, let us try answering some questions to see what we already know about the features of uh, journalistic writing. And uh, here's a reminder, my dear students. Uh, I, I, I'm not really expecting you na right now that, that you're going to be getting the right answers. Kasi kumbaga, uh, trial pa lang, pala pa lang ito, uh, pre-assessment. So ito yung directions natin, okay? So I'll read this one. Uh, direction, study each item carefully. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Okay, so let's start. I will read the questions and choices, and I strongly encourage you to do the same. Kaitse niyo mga bahay lang, or kung nasaan man kayo ngayon, so that we can uh, uh, exercise your uh, speaking skills as well. Okay, all right, so number one question. This is the style of writing used to report news, sto news stories in newspapers, television broadcasts, on radio, and on the internet. Our choices are letter A, journalistic writing, letter B, radio broadcasting, letter C, telenovela, and letter D, TV network. Okay, hello, hello to all of our, uh, to, to all of our viewers right now. I wanna say hi to Camille. Uh, Shais D. Hernandez, watching from Tilapayong Elementary School. Again, uh, what's our answer for question number one? Style of writing used to report news stories. The correct answer is? Okay. So we have here uh, Kylie Aliwalas, Camille Shais Hernandez, Zai Rivera. You are correct. The answer is letter A. That's journalistic writing. Very good. Next, number two, question is? The first sentence underneath the headline should give the reader more information on the story and sum up what it is going to be about. Our choices are letter A, title, letter B, heading, letter C, introduction, and letter D, headline. Okay, once again, uh, I'll give you some time to think about this one. The first sentence underneath sa ilalim ng headline, at merong summary ka na doon, you, you'll have an idea what the news story is all about. Okay? So let me go ahead and check the comments. We have Jesslyn uh, Margaret Espinida. Okay. Uh, Rian Claire Andico, letter C, uh, introduction. Uh, okay. John Paulo Lacas, letter C, introduction. Kian Anthony Inostro, introduction. And the correct answer is, of course, that is our introduction. Very good, guys. Okay, so let's go with question number three. Question number three goes this way. Should catch the reader's attention and make them want to read more. Okay, so we already had our headline. We already had the introduction. Uh, this one right here is designed to catch the reader's attention and make them want to read more. Okay, mukhang nasabi ko yung answer ata. Okay. <laughs> anyway, let me go ahead and check the comments right now. Okay, is it letter C for number three? Again, we want to catch the attention of the reader. Kumbaga, ito yung una nilang makikita. The correct answer is letter Letter D, that's your headline. Okay. Hello, Alexander Rodriguez, the store. Okay. So let's proceed with question number four. Number four, recap on some of the main points or suggest possible predictions. What is that? What part of the news is that? Letter A, we have conclusion. Letter B, headline. Letter C, introduction. And letter D, title. Okay, once again, this, uh, the purpose of this, uh, of this particular part of the news article is to recap. So, kailan ka usually nag-recap? 
Okay, so the correct answer here is, all right, hmm, okay, the correct answer is, let me check the comments right now. I'm not sure, baka medyo delay lang yung pag-type, pero anyway, number four, pag sinabi natin recap, that is letter, okay, Timothy Joseph Martinez, correct, the answer is letter A, that's your conclusion. Okay, and next, and our last question for this activity, that's number five. I'm sure that everyone will be able to get this. Number five, this helps us know the latest event that happened around the world. Ano kaya to? Letter A, the options are books. Letter B, we have journalism. Letter C, headline. And letter D, conclusion. Okay, ano kaya? Once again, this helps us know the latest. Ang uh, keyword natin dito ay latest. Pinakahuling pangyayari. Where can we usually get that? Uh, would that be from books, journalism, headline, or conclusion? The correct answer is, okay, all right. The correct answer is letter uh, B, correct. That's journalism. Okay, very good. Okay, sige. Now, um, well done, my dear students. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, it's totally fine if you're not going to be able to get all the uh, all the answers correctly. Because then again, uh, tinatry lang natin if ano yung idea ninyo when it comes to journalism. But before anything else, I have another activity for you. And here is the direction. Let's try this one instead. Okay? So the direction goes this way. Write F if the sentence expresses a fact. And O if the sentence expresses an opinion, okay? Once again, write F if the sentence expresses a fact, and O if the sentence expresses an opinion. Now, can you still recall uh, what a fact and an opinion is and how they differ from one another? Medyo konting review tayo ngayon, okay? For, for those na medyo nakalimutan siguro kung ano yung fact or opinion. A fact is something that is always true. Okay, take note of that. It's always true. And how do we know that it's true? We can do that by doing our research. Okay, so pag ni-research natin at lumabas yun and uh, na-confirm natin na totoo yan, then that is a fact. Whereas an opinion is what you think or feel. It's your personal belief. Okay, so maaaring uh, kung ano yung personal belief mo, baka yung seatmate mo uh, or yung kaklase mo hindi, hindi mag-agree sa, sa, sa personal belief mo. And, that, and that's perfectly fine. But that's the difference between fact and opinion. Okay, so let's try this one. Item number one, okay. Philippines imposes travel ban on India over the new COVID-19 variants. Okay, Ian Ponzilan, fact is true. Very good. So number one is an example of let me check the comments. Kian Anthony Nostra, very good. The correct answer is letter F. Okay, those who got the right answers, we also have Martin, Angel Dave, Nagumpreza, and Zai Rivera. Okay, almost everyone in the comments, I believe everyone in the comments were able to get the correct answers for item number one. And let's proceed with item number two. Okay, City ABC successfully contains COVID-19 spread. Again, uh, sentence number two, City ABC successfully contains COVID-19 COVID spread. Okay, let me go ahead and check the comments. The correct answer is, okay. The correct answer for this one is letter O. Okay, this is an opinion. Now, uh, why is it an opinion? Pagpalagay natin na totoo or, or existing talaga itong uh, city ABC. But the thing is, to say that it has successfully contained a COVID-19 spread is, is kind of difficult to, uh, to prove uh, na, na tama itong statement na to. Because, you know, uh, there might be some people that would say that it's not successful, while others might say that it is successful. So in a way, this statement right here is an opinion, okay? So uh, no worries about that. Let's go ahead and check item number three. Okay, sentence number three, COVID-19 India variant cases in the Philippines confirmed. Okay, let me read that once again. COVID-19 India variant cases in Philippines confirmed. What do you think, people? Uh, is this a fact or an opinion? Okay. 
All right. Okay. Let me go back here to the comments. Say Rivera F. Facts. Okay. We have uh, Shaima Gablinas. Fact. And Gretchen Rehensha. Fact. You were all correct. Number three is a fact. Very good. And number four. Let's try this one. Online registration for national ID system to start on April 30. Okay. What do you think? Is this statement true or is it a personal belief? What do you think? Again, we are in number two. Uh, I'm sorry, number four. Online registration for national ID system to start on April 30. The correct answer, Enchil Keith Pasqua, Ernshel, sorry for mispronouncing that one, Ilana May Miren, and Sophia Athena Perulina F. You are all correct. Very good. And last uh, number, we have number five. Demolition of Riverside residents worse than COVID-19. Okay, once again, uh, number five, demolition of Riverside residents, residents worse than COVID-19. Pag, mag, pag sinabi natin worse, mas malala pa kesa sa COVID-19. Uh, yung demolition ng Riverside uh, residents. Okay, very good. Martin, uh, Martin Angel Dave, opinion, letter O, correct? The answer is indeed letter O. Jennifer Francisco also got the correct answer. Lexo, Lexer Riley Javier also got the correct answer. Again, uh, let's focus on the word worse. Kasi maaaring para sa ibang mga residents, mas malala yung COVID-19. So baka hindi naman yun yung belief nila. Baka personal belief mo lang yun. So you are correct. The answer for number five is definitely letter O for opinion. Okay? So ang galing-galing ng ating mga participants sa ngayong hapon. Okay, now uh, let us proceed. I have here two pictures that I would like to show you and I would want you to identify what are shown in the pictures right now. Okay, so this is the first picture and here is the uh, second picture. Okay, so let's start with the picture on your left. What is this? Can anyone uh, comment uh, what the uh, picture on the left is? Okay, all right, Ian Ponzalan, hello, hello, Rian Claire and Dico, ball pen and paper, you're correct. This is a pen and paper. Lexer Riley Javier also got the correct answer. Micah Mariel Bernardo also got the correct answer, paper and pen. How about the item or how about the picture on the right of your screen? What is that? Okay, see you I'll be waiting for your comments in the comment section. What is this one? And I would want you to be more specific. Merong, uh, merong nakatag or merong nakasulat dyan sa item na yan. So what is that? Yung, uh, picture number, uh, yung picture on the right. Okay. All right. So anyway, just want to say hi to all of our viewers right now, especially, of course, to our students from Enrique B. Magalona Elementary School. Hello, hello uh, to the students of Sir Joffel Balagosa. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, this one here is, yes, you're correct. This is a microphone, but more specifically, this is, according to Martin, this is the Anchor's microphone. Uh, you are also correct, but to be more specific, para mas tama ito, uh, let's call this one a reporter's microphone. Okay, very good. Now, combine the both of them. How are they related? Okay, but my pen and paper at merong reporter's microphone, uh, what usually comes into our mind or what can we possibly expect? Okay, so the pen, paper, and microphone, you know, these are the ingredients. Ito yung ginagamit ng ating mga reporters to do what? To make and deliver the news. Very good. Now, question is, is it important for people to be updated with the latest news? What do you think? Uh, okay, Kylie Aliwalas, correct, news. Uh, Micah Bernardo, news, yes. Those two pictures uh, are used by reporters to deliver the news. My second question is, is it important for people to be updated with the latest news? Importante ba yung news sa atin? How about you, kayong mga grade 4? Uh, do you also watch the news? Do you find the stuff on the news relevant para sa inyo? Okay, Lian Gudito, yes, of course. And uh, we also have, thank you, uh, thank you, Lian. And Alexander, the story, yes, sir, tama. It is important because, uh, because, because of the news, we become aware 
uh, of the latest news happening. Kung ano man yung nangyayari uh, sa paligid natin or or sa, sa ating bansa or uh, even the whole world. Okay, not just in our country but in other countries as well. Okay, very good. So, uh, let's proceed. Medyo konting uh, backtrack muna tayo. Now, I know that you are in grade 4 and you're very familiar and you, you're actually, dare I say, experts na kayo sa paggamit ng internet. Tama ba? Okay? Sige. So, but, but there was a time, bago pa itong internet na to, yung news nanto na. Okay? Pero, paano ba dinideliver yung news? Paano ba malalaman? Paano ba malalaman ng mga citizens dati, nung wala pang internet, kung ano yung latest news? Ito yung challenge. Okay? Kasi dati, people had limited options for accessing news. Ano kaya yung mga options na to? Kung walang internet, uh, how would we get a hold of the news? Right? Okay. And back then, before the internet, yung daily news came in the form of newspapers or television news programs. Okay, Kylie Alawalas, yes, correct. Newspaper yung ginagamit dati. Up until now, we, we actually use that. Um, and next, uh, less urgent stories could be found in magazines or weekly newspaper supplements. Yung mga bagay uh, na, na importante, they usually make it to the newspaper, but yung mga less important, they would arrive to you maybe after a week, after a month, depende, depende sa pag-print, kumbaga. Ayan po Zalan, you're correct, we also have radio to deliver the news. So imagine, may gusto kang malaman kung kung sa isang... Uh, Pagpalagay na natin isang, uh, isang grupo na iniidolo mo and then you're waiting for news. Pero, uh, kumbaga pa, uh, parang kinoconsider na hindi naman masyadong importante yung news na yun. Be back then, before the internet, you had to wait for that kind of news na ma-print sa kung anumang magazine. You might have to wait a week, a month, depende. Pero dati yun, okay? We are very uh, fortunate right now. That we have 24-7 access to any type of news in any format, and that's thanks to the internet. Okay, so let me proceed. Okay, pre-internet, walang internet dati, ngayon meron ng internet. Uh, did the features of journalism or of journalistic writing change? The answer is no. Meron may internet, wala mang internet, yung pagsulat natin ng news has almost remained the same. Pareho pa rin. Okay? May, may, medyo may mga konting pagkakaiba lang, pero mainly speaking, it's, it's, it's the same. Okay? Sige. Alright, so let me go ahead and check our comment section. Alexander, this story. Yes, television. Uh, Ronalyn. Reyes, radio and TV. Yes, those were the uh, conventional ways or traditional ways, kumbaga, uh, before the internet. Uh, so to speak. Kasi kahit naman ngayon, we still use television and the radio for getting our news. So let's define what journalism is. Okay. So I would like you to uh, focus on this one, my uh, dear learners. Okay. Journalism is defined as the act of writing about news-related subjects for all mediums, print or non-print. So, pag nagsulat ka ng balita, whether mapaprint man yan or non-print, whether ipapublish sa internet or newspaper or you deliver through television or radio, that is considered journalism. Okay? So, I hope we are clear on that one. And ano bang tawag natin sa, uh, sa isang tao na nag-exercise nag ng journalism? Okay? That, of course, is the journalist. And the journalist, siya yung uh, nag-gather ng information, sineselect niya yung tamang information, vini-verify kung tama ba ito, baka, baka opinion lang ito ng isang tao. And then, siya yung nag-deliver uh, with a standard of honesty. Dapat pang in-honest tayo. Yes, siya yung mag you're correct. Uh, it is used by journalists. Very good. Okay. So, ano naman yung tawag sa style ng pagsusulat nila? That is, my dear learners, journalistic writing. Okay? So, in the style of writing used to report news stories in newspapers, television broadcasts on radio and on the internet. Okay? So, ito yung style ng pagsusulat nila. Now, what are the features of journalistic writing? Paano natin malalaman, uy, journalism pala tong binabasa ko. Isa pala tong news. So, simple lang. It's very easy actually to identify. First and foremost, dapat malaman natin kung ano yung purpose. Para sa ano ba tong sinulat na ito? If the purpose is to write about events, 
Okay. If the purpose is to write about events in a way that appeals to the intended audience, then that is journalistic writing. Okay. So once again, you would know that that is journalism once you identify the purpose. Para sa ano itong sinusulat na ito. Next, uh, malalaman natin also through structure. Okay. So, ito yung structure ng journalism class or journalistic writing rather. First and foremost, meron yung headline. Okay? Merong headline. Uh, ano ba yung headline? The headline is supposed to catch the reader's attention and make them want to read on. So, um, pag tinignan natin yung newspaper, ito dapat yung, I'm, I'm sure, nakakita na kayo ng isang newspaper, maraming mga text dyan. We have pictures and a lot of mga words, sentences, paragraphs. Now, para hindi ka, uh, pa, para makapture yung attention mo, you have this, uh, what we call the headline as part of your news, okay? The next one is, of course, your first sentence or otherwise known as the introduction. By the title itself, by the name itself, it's the first sentence, okay? So saan ito makikita? Yung headline nasa itas, okay? The first sentence or the introduction is underneath that, okay? Nasa ilalim ng headline. And ano ba yung purpose ng introduction natin? It's supposed to give the reader more information on the story and sum up what it is going to be about, okay? So once again, ano tawag natin dito? This is your introduction. And after the introduction, that's when you have the body. Okay, correct. Okay, I'm checking the comment section right now. Uh, I, I'm very happy that you're all commenting on uh, on our comment section. All right, so here we have the body. It's uh, the body is split into paragraphs. Okay, after the introduction, nandun na yung body mo. You have uh, you have uh, paragraphs to help the reader clearly understand the information on the story. Now, each new paragraph may be given a subheading. Now, don't worry, uh, my dear learners, we are going to get a sample news article later, and then we will identify where's the body, where's the introduction body, and, and, and so forth, so on and so forth. Okay, now, take note. News ito, okay? You're, you're actually writing about somebody else or something else. Ibig sabihin, hindi hindi ka pwedeng gumamit ng words na as if nandun ka talaga, uh, as if sa iyo yung nangyayari yung report or or yung or yung event rather. So you're not supposed to use the word he, she, I or me. Okay? It's always supposed to be in the third person. Okay? Ayan Ponsalan, Rian Claire and Dico, Ronalyn Reyes. Hello, hello. Okay, next. Remember, pag magsusulat tayo ng news, we're actually writing about something that has already happened. So if it has already happened, it's supposed to be in, syempre, ano ba yung tense ng verb natin? It's supposed to be in the past tense. Okay, very good. Okay, and finally, we have the conclusion. The conclusion is usually found at the end of the news article. And the purpose of that one is to recap, is to summarize everything. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, recap on that one. Language features, news is supposed to be in past tense, written in third person, includes logical and time connectors or connectives, and can include quotes from people involved in the story. And the language is chosen to make the story interesting and appeal to the intended audience. Okay. So, eto, uh, my dear learners, I have here a sample news article. What we're going to do this afternoon is we're going to study this news article and we are going to identify which one is the headline, uh, the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. Okay? Is everyone ready? So, I'll be reading this one. Uh, nakikita na, uh, I'm sure you've seen this one on TikTok. We're in. Uh, we have uh, some TikTokers read the news uh, and then they're, they're going to try it. Uh, Try reading from a prompter. So, uh, ito yung gagawin natin ngayon, okay? I'd like you to do that uh, in your homes, in your in your rooms, or nasaan man kayo ngayon. Okay, so let me uh, start reading the news right now, okay? So, Malacanang suspends classes and government work. Manila, Philippines. Malacanang declared a two-day suspension of government work and classes in all levels due to the nationwide jeepney transport strike last October 16 and 17. Executive Secretary Salvador Medeldea announced the suspension on Sunday morning, October 15. Classes in all levels, both public and private schools and government work, will be suspended nationwide on October 16 and 17, 2017 to avoid public inconvenience from the public transport strike, Presidential Spokesperson Ernesto Abelia said. 
Suspension of work in the private sector is subject to the discretion of the employers. Okay, sige. So did you try uh, doing that one uh, on your end, my dear learners? Okay. Oh, yo, and Sophia, please follow my TikTok. Okay, Mad Aesthetic Sophia A. I, I'm ex I, I would follow you, and I, I'm really expecting that you're going to be doing uh, some news reporting on your TikTok account. Okay, sige. So let's identify which one is the headline. Okay. Sige. The headline, uh, my dear learners, is Malacanang Suspense Classes and Government Work. Now, remember, the headline is supposed to be eye-catching, and it's going to make uh, the, the readers want to read more. So where can we find that? It's actually found uh, sa pinakataas ng news article, and it's in bold letters. Malaking letters yon because, again, the purpose is to catch the reader's attention. Okay, next, we have the sentence or the, uh, the first sentence or the introduction. In this case, uh, the first sentence or introduction is Manila, Philippines. Malacanang declared a two-day suspension of government work and classes on all, all levels due to the nationwide jeepney transport strike last October 16 and 17. My dear learners, saan nga natin makikita yan? It's found after the headline. Okay? Sige. And let's proceed. Uh, which part? Of the news article is the body. Okay, it's it's a very long uh, uh, set of paragraphs right here. But in order to easily identify this one, I'd like you uh, to take a look at the highlighted uh, text in the news article. So pinakataas yung nasa pinakataas yung headline, followed by the introduction, and after the introduction, that's where you can find the body of your news article. Okay, so yeah, and remember. It, uh, the, 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 the verbs should be in past tense or in past form. Uh, I picked out some examples here. We have the words declared, announced, and suspended. Ayun. Actually, marami pa dyang mga, mga verbs in that article, but I just chose to highlight three. Uh, at least makita lang natin uh, that, that we really are using the past tense. Because again, remember, nagre-report tayo tungkol sa isang bagay na tapos na or nangyari na. Okay, and siyempre, third person, uh, you're telling uh, a, a story, you're, you're giving news, and you're, uh, you're supposed to be in the third person kasi you're telling a news about someone or something, okay? And san kaya yung, uh, san kaya yung ating conclusion? It's found at the latter part, pinaka-last part ng ating news article. We're going to take a look at that. It's found there, uh, down there uh, at the bottom part. And I highlighted that one as well. Okay, again, the purpose of this one is to recap the main points or maybe possible predictions. Okay? Sige. Try na natin. Sige, I'll be checking the comment section right now. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to read the article carefully and answer the questions that follow. Shamay, uh, Shai Magablinas, you're correct. I believe that this is in response to... Um, this is in response to uh, to the conclusion. Yes, it's actually found in the end. Okay, you're ready? So here it goes. Here is our news article right now. Okay, I'll be reading this one for you. Batasan High to host regional press conference and contest. Quezon City, young, journalist, uh, young journalists from different public and private schools in Metro Manila joined the 2017 regional, uh, regional schools press conference and contest held in Batasan Hills National High School on August 22 to 26. The press conference aims to showcase students' talents and skills in various areas of campus journalism and give students a chance to learn from other students through healthy and friendly competition. The contest will hold individual and group contests where students will show their writing and artistic prowess. The contest will take place for two days to cater to the individual and group categories. A program and awarding ceremony will happen on the third day of the event. The students, together with their paper advisors, are looking forward to an exciting. Let me go ahead and check. Parang hindi makikita jana. Okay, I, uh, I believe that the text here is an exciting uh, competition. Okay, forgive me for that one. Okay, so let's identify what is the headline. There goes my question for you, uh, my dear learners. What is the headline in the news article that I just showed you earlier? Siging at. Okay. I'll be uh, checking the comment uh, section right now. Again, the question is, what is the headline? Okay, sige. All right, this one is uh, very easy 
remember the headline is supposed to be eye catching and in terms of placement san ba natin makikita yung headline okay all right sige now i know that it might be uh okay oh here we go zai rivera batasan high to host regional press conference and contest very good that is indeed our headline Okay, Lian Gudito, Batasan High to host regional. I believe uh, baka na send lang ito, hindi pa natapos type. But the whole, uh, our whole headline here is Batasan High to host regional press conference and contest. Very good. Uh, Jane, Erika Galang, Cal Mirasol. Very good, very good, guys. Okay, next question here. What is the introduction? Okay, now I know that... Uh, I know that this is going to warrant you or this is going to require you to type the whole thing. So instead of asking you what the introduction is, uh, my, I would rather change it to San ba natin makikita yung introduction? Where can we find it? After the headline, San ba natin makikita yung, uh, yung introduction? Okay? Sige nga. Okay. Ian Ponzalan, shout out. Lian Godito, Alexander Distor. Okay. Sige. So instead of my previous question, uh, what is the introduction? Because I know that marami kayong dapat type. Yon, Jane Erika Galang. That's the first paragraph or the first sentence. Pwede yon. In the first sentence, Kian in Austria. That is correct. And it's usually found uh, via Hermione Angeles. You are correct. It's found after the headline. Very good. Okay. Next. Okay. What is the conclusion? Okay. Sige. So the conclusion, again, the same with uh, my previous uh, uh, direction. Instead of typing the whole thing, I'd rather change my question to where can we find the conclusion? Okay. There you go, Martin Angel Dave Preza. That is correct. It's found at the end of the paragraph, the conclusion, uh, or the the end rather of the news article. Okay, let me uh, let us uh, correct you on that one. It's found. Yes, it's the last sentence, Kalimiras all. Okay, so I'm supposed to have another uh, news article here for practice, but since we uh, don't have that much time, let me go ahead and proceed with the assessment okay all right so we are almost done and this one's very easy the direction is read the article carefully and answer the questions that follow okay see again so here is the article okay so uh, let's read that one all together uh, Blue Eagles victory over Bulldogs. The Ateneo Blue Eagles emerged victorious over the NU Bulldogs 72-60 to on Saturday, September 6th at the Araneta Coliseum. The Blue Eagles defended head-on during the first quarter, but they regained on the offensive during the second half of the second quarter. Kiefer Ravenna led the Blue Eagle team with 13 points. 11 rebounds, and with 9 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 assists. Steve Pinks, top scored for the Bulldogs with 12 points, 9 rebounds, and De La Torre contributed 8 points and 5 boards. The Blue Eagles flies with a record of 7-1, and the Bulldogs with a 14-1 record in men's basketball season 76. Quarter scores were 17-11, 33-28, 55-45, and 72-60. Okay, sige. All right. Now, mas, uh, it's, this one here is going to be a lot easier because we're going to have choices instead. So first question is, what is the headline? Okay, sige. Again, what is the headline? Is it letter A, letter B, letter C, or letter D? Okay, let me go ahead and check the uh, comment section right now. Okay. Once again, shout out to everyone who's watching us right now uh, on FB Live and uh, through the different platforms uh, that, that's being utilized by Depot, uh, uh, EdTech, by, by the Depot EdTech unit, uh, specifically for this uh, Etalize session. Okay. Sige. The correct answer is, what is the headline? The correct answer is letter A, Blue Eagles victory over Bulldogs. Okay. Next question. 
what is the conclusion of this writing? Okay, now we remember that the conclusion is found at the last part of the paragraph. I'm sorry, at the last part of the news article. So what is the last part? Okay, for number two. Okay. All right, sige. Number two, what is the conclusion of this writing? The correct answer is, boy, okay. All right, the correct answer for number two is actually letter B. Quarter scores were 17 to 11, 33 to 28, 55 to 45, 72 to 60. Okay, and next question, how many paragraphs compose the body of the article? All right, so for number three, how many paragraphs? Okay, so let's go ahead and check that one. We have the headline, we have the, uh, the uh, the introduction, which is one paragraph. And then, as we all know, as what we have discussed earlier, uh, the uh, body is supposed to follow after the headline. So how many paragraphs do we have there? After the, uh, I'm sorry, after the introduction, how many paragraphs? Except for the conclusion, we have actually two. Okay, so the correct answer for number three is letter A. And we're down to our last two questions. What is the first sentence or introduction? Okay, so let me go back there. So where can we find that one? Okay, the introduction is actually found below the headline. So that should be this statement right here. So the correct answer for this is for number... Uh, for number four, correct answer is letter C. Okay, so the Ateneo Blue Eagles, that's the correct answer. And last question for our assessment part. Uh, number five, who do you think were the intended audience of this article? I will be waiting for your answers in this one because understandably the previous uh, items require you to uh, require you to really read uh, the, the whole selection. And I know that in the... Uh, Okay, or maybe it's just my uh, my monitor that that's not showing the, uh, the the comments right now. But nevertheless, number five, I'll be waiting for your answers. Who were the intended audience of this article? Boy, okay, I see. So, uh, medyo nahuli lang yung uh, comment yung pagapir ng comments. Number five is you are correct. The intended audience of that particular news article are our sports fans the correct answer is letter b okay thank you thank you okay here we go there it is there are the comments right there kylie aliwalas elena miren uh letter b you are correct camille shais de hernandez okay there you go well done people so uh lastly before we end here are a couple of terms that i would like you to uh uh, th that I would like you to familiarize yourselves with. We have the words audience, news, and reporter. Pag sinabi nating audience, ito yung uh, viewing, reading, or listening public, yung manunood or magbabasa or makikinig sa news ninyo. And news is a report of recent events, and the reporter is a person employed by a newspaper, magazine, or television company. Okay, once again, well done, everyone. Uh, I am very proud and, and, and very happy, of course, with your uh, participation uh, sa ating lesson for this afternoon. So once again, uh, I want to thank you so much for tuning in for today's ETLI session. And of course, all the parents, uh, teachers, and learners all over the Philippines watching us right now through Depot EdTech Unit, Depot Tayo, Depot Philippines Facebook pages, and Depot TV official YouTube channel. Thank you, thank you, everyone. See you next week. Once again, this is Tutor Ace, and uh, have a great week, everyone. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. 
Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Ito Live free online tutorial session sa Filipino. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Ito Live tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!